Now let's look at electromagnetic radiation in a little bit more detail. Probably the part of the electromagnetic spectrum that we're most familiar with is the visible spectrum because we can actually see the colors. If we have a white light source and we put that white, source, white light source through a prism, what the prism does is it separates out the white light into its individual colors. White light is a mixture of all the colors of visible light, which are red, orange, yellow, green, blue, and violet. And what makes these colors different is their wavelengths are different, or their frequencies are different as well. And if their wavelengths and frequencies are different, their energies are different. When we see something that is colored, it is because that object absorbs some wavelengths while reflecting the others. The color that is reflected is the color that we see. So something appears yellow, it is reflecting yellow while absorbing red, orange, green, blue, and violet. Or if something appears blue, it is absorbing red, orange, yellow, and green, and violet, and reflecting blue. Here we have uh, the different types of electromagnetic radiation. You're familiar with all these types, but let's look at how they're classified. They're classified by their wavelength or by, um, you could also classify them by their frequency. We're going to start with the longest wavelength or the highest wavelength. Radio waves have wavelengths that are a centimeter high or greater. Microwaves are a little bit shorter between 10 to the minus 4th to 10 to the minus 2, so less than a centimeter to 10 to the minus 4th meters. Infrared, or IR, is shorter wavelength still, 8, ti 8 times 10 to the minus 7th meters to uh, 10 to the minus 5th meters. And then visible has a tiny, tiny range, 4 times 10 to the minus 7th to 8 times 10 to the minus 7th meters. Tiny range compared to the other ranges. And then ultraviolet right, ultraviolet light, x-rays, and gamma rays all have increasingly shorter wavelengths, with gamma rays having the shortest, as short as a picometer, or 10 to the minus 12th meter. Now, um, not only do these different types of electromagnetic radiation have different wavelength and frequency, but they also have different energy. The shorter the wavelength, the higher the energy. So these types are the highest energy, with gamma rays being by far the highest energy. Ultraviolet light has enough energy to break chemical bonds, which is why it can be so damaging to skin. X-rays and gamma rays have enough energy to disrupt DNA, which is why both of these are associated with cancer. Microwaves have enough energy to rotate a small molecule, such as water. And so a microwave oven, when it emits microwave radiation, allows water molecules in food to rotate quickly. It is the friction of this rotation that allows heat, that allows food to heat up. And here's a pictorial representation of the electromagnetic spectrum. Typically, it is written in terms of wavelength. Here we have our lowest energy or longest or highest wavelength. And here we have our highest energy, or shortest, or lowest wavelength. So as the wavelength gets shorter, the frequency goes up, and the energy goes up. As the wavelength is longer, the frequency goes down, and the energy goes down. Radio waves at the lowest energy, then microwaves, then infrared. Notice the very, very small part that the visible light takes up but we explode it because uh, visible light is so important to us as human beings. And we see that red has the longest wavelength and therefore is the lowest energy. And violet has the shortest wavelength and therefore is the highest energy. And then here we have high energy radiation and short wavelengths. Now, let's look at um, we're now going to deviate from the classical view of energy, which is wavelength, and we're going to now look at looking at light as particles. Scientists in the early 20th century showed that we could describe the behavior as light as particles, and they called this particles photons, from Greek for light. And actually, I must say that these these scientists, Max Planck and Albert Einstein, were not the first to come up with this. Actually, Newton, 
who invented calculus, also described light in terms of particles, but it became out of vogue to describe it in that way, and so light has since, uh, for the past 400 years or so, been, been described as wavelengths. And so what they looked at was that light has actually properties that are consistent with particles as well as properties that are consistent with waves. And so this was something that was never really addressed. We always thought either something was a wave or it wasn't. But now, in the early 20th century, they came up with some evidence that showed that, wit, that light could perform as a particle as well as a wave. Now each wavelength of light has photons that have different amount of energy. Short wavelength light have photons with high energy and high frequency light has photons with high energy. So short wavelength means high frequency. So radio wave photons have the lowest energy they have the longest wavelength and the lowest frequency, and gamma ray photons have the highest energy. They have the shortest wavelengths and the highest frequency. And as I already mentioned, that these high energy electromagnetic radiation, ultraviolet and higher, can potentially damage biological molecules because they have enough energy to do so. Okay, so go ahead and pause this slide and go ahead and order these different types of electromagnetic radiation, looking back at the spectrum in your textbook, from by wavelength, short to long, by frequency, low frequency to high frequency, and by energy, least amount of energy to most. Okay, let's take a look at the answers. Shortest to longest, gamma, of course, has the longest, then UV, and then within the visible spectrum, green has shorter wavelength than red, and then microwaves um, have the longest wavelength. By frequency, lowest frequency to highest, so it's going to be opposite of this. Lowest frequency is going to be the longest wavelength, which is microwaves, then red, then green, then ultraviolet, and then the highest frequency is going to be the shortest wavelength, gamma. And then these two are going to be exactly the same because energy and frequency are directly related. So the lowest frequency is going to be the lowest energy and the highest frequency is going to be the highest energy.